What's up, everyone? Matt Rosick, and this will be work in progress number three on Judy. So uh, yesterday I finished up by basically getting everything pinned together uh, and fitting and doing the skirt and everything. The skirt actually took probably the longest out of everything just trying to get that on. Today what I'm going to do is we're going to do some more surgery. I'm going to cut the seat off. I'm going to put some magnets in it. I'm going to hollow it out. I bought all the stuff to do the lights for the, um, for the uh, tail lights. And I also got the little mini TV kit in, which uh, let me go get that. I'll show you to one second. So this is what I bought <laughs> to put in this guy's face. So um, I think the screen is just big enough. So it's actually a really cool freaking kit. So you get a 3D printed TV. That's the size of the screen, which I think is going to be just about right for him. Again, I'm going to have to kind of reshape this uh his face a little bit i may just put it right in there uh center it um and do it that way we'll see um uh, but it comes with all the stuff you need to do to put this together so that's the tv screen right there <laughs> um pretty cool I'm not sure what this guy is um place for battery button battery um, I don't know. Those are all the components, and all the, there's a battery here too. So the instructions you have to go online to look at, but that's just kind of what this looks like. So when I got online, I was researching this, and initially I was thinking, oh, I could do something with like Raspberry Pi, uh, the Raspberry stuff, but I've never done that, and it's programming, and I'm like, give me something in a kit that I can do relatively simple, and I found this. Um, I actually found like first like on a Chinese website and then Amazon had them. So this little thing's not cheap, it's 75 bucks. So with tax is about $84, um, sorry, it's like $80 and then tax $85 or so, but it's pretty damn cool. So all the examples I saw were like in doll houses and things like that, but it comes with a little remote, which doesn't have a, a casing or anything, but it's got a on off, volume up, mute, channel. So there's already like pre-programmed like stuff on here's like five or six channels and like one is static one is just the colored bars but you can you can load up to five hours of your own content onto this thing so i'm going to do clips of the jetsons <laughs> and uh tony can watch the jetsons uh while she's on display so pretty cool i'm not sure how long the battery lasts um to be honest but pretty pretty cool so we are going to try to get this to work in that guy all right, so that's gonna be the most challenging thing I've ever done modeling-wise, which will be fun. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take her apart. I'm not gonna show it on camera because it's the same steps as I did with her waist. I'm gonna cut the seat off, and then we're gonna work on getting the lights, the lighting wired and stuff for the tail lights. So let me get kind of things situated. I spent a couple hours this morning cleaning my work area up. I spent a little time refining the work I did yesterday. So this morning was basically just kind of cleaning up and going over my work from yesterday. And I probably still have a little more to do, but anyway, let me get situated and we'll come back. Okay, again, I'm not gonna really show this on camera, but similar process as I did for the waist, I'm just gonna come in here. And even though there's a really good defined mold line, not mold line, but a detail in the sculpt, I'm just gonna go ahead and color this in with black just as an added visual reference for what I'm cutting. And um, we're gonna go from there. But uh, also this morning, um, I spent some time, I had to go to the electronics store to get uh, LEDs and a switch and a, ba a, uh, a battery holder for the button battery. So uh, between cleanup, a little work this morning and then going to the store and stuff, that was pretty much half my day, so not i'm kind of getting a late start as far as actually working on the kit goes but um sometimes it just happens <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta go shopping for stuff every once in a while i do need to you know i should have every once in a while you just gotta stop and and clean up for an hour you know or so to see where things are because if i don't there's a good chance i could lose something or break something so anyway i'm gonna mark that i'm gonna cut this out and then i'm gonna come back once this is cut and we'll go from there Okay, so we got the top off, uh, a little cleaner than the waist. Uh, I ended up actually going with the Dremel a little bit, uh, just to kind of, because my, again, my blade was going askew. I'll have to re-drill the holes for the sissy bar because I kind of obliterated those, but not the end of the world. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna smooth this out pretty good, I think. 
and I got to kind of, again, before I do any, what I want to do is get this kind of, um, the re-keying done where I go back and I kind of do the putty work and get this to fit before I go and wallow this out for electronics. So, um, yeah, I want to get that kind of situated before I do that. So I'm going to sand this out. I'm going to sand this and do some putty work, get this fitting better again. Um, that way I can make it removable and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to sand this off camera because sanding is not fun to watch. Okay, so what I'm doing is I sanded this uh, relatively, you know, clean this up a little bit. I sanded this down a little bit. What I'm actually doing is since this is for a client and not my personal piece, I want this I want this part to look a little nicer since this will be removable. So I just put a very thin layer of uh, Bondo body filler on this. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to sand this smooth. Once this is done and I get the shape I want, because again, my blade was a little skew and it's a little messy, I'm going to do my Vaseline trick. I'm going to get this smooth. I'll put Vaseline on this, on the seat bottom, or just the top of the seat. I'll put some Bondo here and I'll push it down, I'll squish it down, and then I'll get the seat back to where it needs to be in the location, and hopefully this will be a nice round shape so it doesn't look all messy like that so once i kind of clean up from sawing then i'm going to go in and i'm going to uh start hauling the center section out for the battery and the wires so let me show you what i got for that uh, well, i don't have the rest but for the battery i'm going to use a little button battery uh so i bought two types these are for cr32 batteries cr2032 batteries are Oh, I got the wrong battery. It says 25. Shit, I had to return that. So I need to see our 2023, uh, 2032 battery. So I have to return this to Walmart. Um, I'll just keep these. I'll use them for something else. Uh, so I bought a vertical mount and I bought a, uh, a flat mount. I'll probably use the vertical mount because what I can do with this is depending on how I put this in, I can kind of glue that to the side inside here and the battery will be able to easily, easily take, be taken in and out. Uh, I, somewhere which I don't have, it's not in here, but a very small micro switch, which I'll be able to hopefully drill out and put here and I'll cover that up with a license plate. Um, again, I'll talk to my client about that because again, well, I'll see about that or if he wants me to make it so the switch is on the inside. To me, I think the switch should be on the outside so you don't have to take her on and off. But again, this will be, seat will be magnetized. So this comes on and off to put the battery in and out. Um, and they got LEDs. Again, I don't have them here on my bench. They're, they're somewhere um, in a bag. But um, so I'm going to work on getting this all smoothed out and looking a little bit nicer. Okie dokie. So I did my Vaseline trick. So I put Vaseline on the, the seat bottom. Um, slide it, put a thin coat of Bondo, pushed it on, and I just let it ooze out. And I took a Q-tip with some thinner and cleaned up the edges. And then I just popped this off. And now this looks really good. This isn't 100% cure, so I'm gonna let this dry a little bit longer. But now what I'm gonna do, once this dries, I'm gonna go clean up my little snafu with the blade there. Um, and here, a few little areas where the blade slipped a little bit, I'm gonna just sand those a little bit. But now I've got um, a nice fit again. <laughs> so you take it up, you saw it, you fix all your screw ups and you put it back together so it looks like it never came apart. But now this fits on here really good. Um, and then once I clean these areas up, I'm going to start hollowing this out and I'll use a Dremel for that. I've got to leave room for magnets uh, for the seat. So I'll probably put a magnet in the front here and uh, we'll see. I don't think I need a lot of room for the electronics. It's basically just a button battery and that switch that I'm gonna put in there. So uh, I'm gonna clean up for malt while I'm gonna fix these two areas. I'm gonna show that on camera, it's pretty simple. A little sandy, a little putty. And then when I start to uh, hollow this out, I'll come back. Okay, dokie. So I just did a little bit of cleanup on those two. I got one spot here still and one spot there. I'm gonna do some putty work there and I got a little bit right here where I nicked this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, the magnets for the seat. And I was thinking to myself, um, I'm not sure what Randy did if he did this, but I'm thinking that I was gonna put a magnet in the seat for her butt, but but <laughs> there's not enough meat in here now since we took this top of the seat off, there's not enough depth in there. So what I think we're gonna do is I'm gonna just um, 
epoxy the seat to her. So that way, so she'll be one piece and the seat will be part of her just like that. And this will all magnetize on just like that. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not sure if that's what Randy did, but I think that's what we need to do to get her stable. Um, Cause then otherwise I try to magnetize this and put magnets in that. Then I have uh, competing magnets and that's never a good thing. So I've got some core, these are some half inch magnets. These are pretty big, um, but I think we're gonna go ahead and use them because I think it's imperative to make sure that these line up, that th this has enough oomph, like grab to it. So uh, Randy sent me a photo of this. He's got, a, he's got, I don't know if it's a magnet or a peg, but he's got a hole here and a hole there. Um, so I'm thinking, I'll do the same. So what we're gonna do here is again, I'm just gonna kind of, I'm gonna put a hole, actually I need this kind of on the flat spot. So, well, I need, yeah, I need to go there. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna just drill a, a little hole. I'm gonna put the magnets in it and then I'm gonna put in uh, the electronics, I think. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, where's my blue tack? There it is, okay. I just need a very small bit of this because this fits really good. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on. Make sure it's where it needs to go. And we're gonna give that a push. Just double checking, make sure that we're Really just make sure it's kind of centered, okay? A little push. Come on. Just wanted to stick to, you know what I can do is, um, sometimes I do this, I put a little, a little baby powder on the blue tack, just a little resin dust, just like this. And that way it won't stick on the other surface so much. There, give it a little push. And once I get the magnet in, the magnet's in, and I get the situated. If I need to do any additional putty work, I can. I can need to move this blue tack up here a little bit. It's not quite where I need it. I'm just gonna take a little sanding dust. Back still, and get the front a little push down. I did, so I got a little blue peg there. Oh, shoot, I don't know if I can put a magnet there. I don't know if I have enough depth. Okay, don't think that's gonna work because I don't have enough depth. Um, unless, okay, I gotta think through this. Really need more need a magnet like right here. Okay. Now I could. Here's an idea. I'm just thinking out loud here. I wonder if I should put once I glue this on. If I should put a pin in there too. Let's see. How big is this magnet? I put one here. Um, I wonder if I do a magnet and a pin. Okay, I gotta think through this for a little bit. Okay, so a thing we're gonna do is I think we're gonna go ahead, this is my plan, <laughs> hopefully it works. I think we're gonna pull the seat bottom on here 
I'm going to, I think I'm going to pin this. I'm not going to glue it yet, but I'm going to drill a hole through here, hold it on here, and then add a pin to the bottom of her leg. So then we got, and that will be part of the, of which will hold her onto the bike. So I'm going to do a pin there and a magnet towards the back. So if I pin right there and a magnet towards the back, that should hold this on just right. So uh, I think we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna come back after I do all that, this is gonna take me a little while. Okay, so I've been kind of racking my brain over this. Uh, so I kind of got her pinned on there. What I'm gonna do is initially I was gonna embed a magnet into the seat top, but again, there's not enough really meat to put one in there. So I'm gonna glue and this half inch magnet to the bottom here. Well, first I'm gonna drill my holes out and they're gonna countersink uh, a magnet down in here. And then hopefully between the pin and this magnet, sh everything will line up, we'll see. Okay, it took a while, but I got this to work. So I was countersunk a half inch magnet there, glued it onto the seat. And so now what happens is you just put this on and I won't have to pin the seat to her butt because that's actually on there pretty good. I'll put a pin in her leg, and then when he puts when you put this together, just give it a good little push in the pin, and everything will snug it up. So that actually works pretty good. I'll have to re kind of do that hole a little bit. For whatever reason, the brass rod doesn't want to go into the bike very easily, even though it's the right size hole and everything. Just like that. And I'll hold it all together. Okay, so that was a little of a challenging thing to do. And this should hold because I use these magnets with holes in them. So what I do is I, I surface glue it and then I fill the hole in with glue and that should lock it in. Um, so and it's not like you're gonna be taking this thing apart a lot. So I like to fill that up all the way. You don't want to go over, you don't want to overfill it because then the, um, the magnets won't line up. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I was going to put that to the side and I'm going to, I kind of marked where I want to do the electronics. Now, I had an idea to put a switch down here and I think I can still do it. I initially had planned on doing it up here, but I might mount it down here um, and then we'll hang maybe a, a license. I don't know, I'll have to figure something out. Um, but initially I kind of marked where I want to put I want to wall this out and I am going to do the um, the vertical battery holder. So it's going to go in here and then um, I'll do that off camera because that's going to be messy. I want the vacuum going when I do that. Okay, so after lots of drilling, grinding and all that fun stuff, I was able to finally Wallow out the, the seat. I bore a channel underneath the magnet because I, when I drilled that down for the magnet, I went deeper which, to create a void and I was able to go down there. I drilled one eighth inch holes from where the lights attach and those are just big enough for these wires. Now these are actually kind of thick wires. I do have some thinner stuff somewhere, but this is a slightly uh, larger gauge. So uh, right now this works uh, with these wires. And I just got to come in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I got to work on the actual lights themselves. You know, but this is taking quite a while, so hopefully it's worth it. So hopefully my client, hopefully my client uh, thinks it's worth all the work. Again, I'm not, uh, this is like something really new to me doing all this kind of uh, wiring and stuff. I had this going through here just a second ago. Anyway. I'm able to come through here. And if I wiggle this around enough. Come on. I'm able to. <laughs> Maybe. Come on, come on. There we go. Now we can grab it. Ah. 
So uh, what did hindsight being 2020 <laughs> again, since I've never really done this before, I would have taken the hole that I drilled from the magnet and made it even deeper. What I, actually, what I would have done before I didn't, I would have gotten the hole drilled from the magnet, the magnet, then I would have done all this other stuff. Then I would have put the magnet in. Anyway, uh, I got a little touch up right here. I hit the this with the with the grinder a little bit. So anyway, so that's gonna come in there like this. These are then wires here, obviously. I'll wire up the switch. I made this deep enough so I can put this vertical wire mount now. I gotta wire these um, got to solder these wires on in a way that it allows me to still put it in vertically. So I wanted to make sure that um, it's easy to take the battery in and out. Actually, I got to make sure with the battery and it's it's um, deep enough. I may have to make it a little deeper. Let's see. If not, I always have um, come on this one, but I don't like the way it'd be kind of loose. I don't know. I got to figure it out. So anyway, I'm gonna continue playing with this, and uh, I'll come back. I'm just gonna do this off camera because again, it's just a lot of me trying to figure it out. Okay, moving on, another round of cleanup and uh, kind of clean out the bench. So like I, we had this all walled out. I wouldn't sand that this is a little smoother. I checked that I can run the wires from the taillights into the compartment here. I went and got the right batteries. <laughs> so I now have the correct batteries. CR 2032s, these things are freaking expensive. These are like three bucks a piece, but okay. So for the lights themselves, initially I was thinking to myself, I would have to cut this part of the light off and then do something with the LED. But then I was like, wait a second, I don't have to do that. I can just drill a hole from here just to write. I don't want the LED to go all the way. I want to, cause I don't want it like a specular. So I just took a one eighth inch drill bit and I just drilled from the key to the front. So hopefully, and I may go with a slightly bigger one here in a second. Um, so now the LED should fit and the LEDs I have are, I just had them out here. Where'd they go? Uh, well, shoot. I just had them out on my bench. My bench is still a wreck. Even though I cleaned up, it's still a wreck. Somewhere I got a little LEDs. Oh, here they are. A little three millimeter LEDs. So, those should fit in there. Let's see. If not, I'll make the hole a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm gonna make the hole a little bit bigger. So that's a one eighth inch hole. What's the next size up? Can I do a three a five thirty second? Let's see. The more room I have for the wires and everything, the better. Let's see here. Yeah. It's wanting to grip. Thirty second. I'm not sure far how far in these need to go. To be honest, and I still have the key there to. Uh, Glue these on. Okay, 
Okay, so this fits as tight. I wonder if I go um, to a 3 16th. Let's see. There's actually plenty of room in there for. Uh, let's see if I can grab these with the pliers. I'm gonna put a little tape on this. Well, let's see. What I don't want to do is there we go. So this whole part gets painted solid, so you're not gonna see any of that. Okay, there we go. So now it'll fit with the wires on. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do a, a three th uh, a three sixteenth a three sixteenth inch hole into both of these, and then I'm gonna lay out the wiring. Because what I'll probably end up doing is I probably won't. Here's my 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 thought of process on this again. Just me thinking out loud. Just in case these lights go out in the future, I probably won't glue the lights into the. I won't glue the lights in here. I'll just do some super glue. I'll just glue the lights onto this thing. That way, if I need ever need to repair this, I can take the lights off, pull the bulb out, and put in a new bulb. So that's my thought process. So uh, I'm gonna drill a hole for this one, and then we're gonna work on some wiring. Okay, so I've gone in and I wall these holes out even more because the LEDs I bought are really, really freaking dim. But I have some, um, I already own some. So like this is the ones I bought yesterday. And like, that's crazy, it doesn't even show up. But I had these, I should have just tried to use these to begin with, but I was trying to get something smaller, but these are really nice and bright. So now, but they're bigger. These are quite a bit bigger. Um, these are probably like, I'm not sure what size they are. They came in a kit, but now I can get them all the way down in here. And then when I put the battery on, I should light them up nicely. Let's turn this light off. See that? So it should light this tip up nicely. Again, it's gonna be lit from inside here, so you won't see that specular. So now, what I gotta do is I gotta work on wiring this stuff up. And again, do this off camera because it's gonna take me some some trial and error because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, now the switch uh, that I bought, a little itty bitty micro switch which is right here, this little guy. My plan was to mount it like back here. Um, and hide that. So I think I'm still gonna try to do that. And then I'll put something over it. Like, a, like I said, a license plate or something. I don't know, that's my goal. So I'm gonna do all that and I'll come back. Okay, so I got the LEDs wired up and they fit beautifully into the lenses, even with the heat shrink on. So um, just to kind of a test that I did make these holes in the side of the bike a little bit bigger and actually went ahead and drilled them in at an angle. So now I got, this will go in really easily. The wires come out very easily. I got a lot of extra wire here. So I'm going to just do this. I'm going to go ahead and um, so by the time I glue this in, this LED is not going to go anywhere, but I'm going to go ahead and just put a small drop of um, not super glue, uh, hot glue on the LED to keep it from moving around in there. And I'll have a little bit of putty work to do around the edge of the lens, which is no big deal because this part is solid and this is clear. So now I just gotta figure out how to wire up the battery pack to my switch. Now I did find, I found that I, years ago I bought a bunch of LED stuff for Gundam stuff and I forgot I had it, I just found it. I was actually looking for this kind of button right here, a little push button. Because ideally what I'd like to do, again, this is a little beyond my skill set that I've done in the past. I'd like to be able to have the uh, like license plate or whatever, just be able to push it on and off 
without having to take it off to, to um, activate the lights. So ideally, because with this kind of switch, I gotta be able to take it on and off. It's no big deal. This would actually create a smaller hole in the back. And then hopefully I can just do something with the, I don't know, I can come up something with a push button. And the past, uh, the Gundam stuff I had, the resin piece actually had a little bit of a key that went over this button to do that. So I'm gonna play with that. Um, I gotta figure out how to wire this because again, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I gotta figure out which terminals to use to wire between here and the battery and the lights. So I'm gonna figure that out and then we'll come back. Okay, after lots of trial and error uh, and resoldering a few times, I finally got this to work. So I hollowed out a spot here for this switch. I went with this slider switch just because it's a little more robust. But now I can switch this on and off. Um, surprisingly, I thought I had a big enough spot hollowed out in here, but I actually wish it was a little bit bigger. But so what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna try to mount this battery in there. I'm just gonna put it in there. Um, and then, um, Try to shove it down in there. What happens is I don't want these terminals to get bent back and forth too many times. I do have enough slack in here that if I need to put like a new battery terminal, I can. So that'll just go down in there like that. The seat will keep it down like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue these um, lights on, or the, I guess the, the housings, get those glued into place. Now the battery switch is a little crooked and actually what's holding it in is the magnet for the seat. So it's, it's a little crooked, but it's okay because I'm gonna cover that with something. But now we have a switch with working lights. Man, what a nightmare. Uh, I'm sure so someone could have done this in like 30 minutes. It took me like five hours to well, actually, to hollow everything out, take the seat off and everything, it's almost a day, it was almost a day's worth of work for me to do that uh, between yesterday and today. So, uh, yeah, just, you know, it's, just kind of, it's new to me, so it's a learning curve. But that's kind of cool. I'm digging it. Uh, so I'm going to get the lights glued on, and then um, I'll come back. I'm not sure what I do next. Okay, well, I'm rather proud of myself because I'm not one to wire or light things, but... Um, thanks to Randy Van Dyke for the idea for lighting the uh, Filmies Girls Judy bike. So I've got two just steady LEDs in there. I carved out a spot for a switch. I'm going to cover that probably with a custom made license plate. The seat is held on with one half inch, uh, half inch magnet. And then when she gets pinned in, the seat will stay on. But even the magnet holds it in perfectly just as is. But there you go. So Judy's bike is lit up. Pretty cool. Thanks to Randy for the idea. Okay, so I know I didn't show a whole lot of the process when I was doing all this, but it was just a huge learning curve for me. So um, I actually had to stop and look at some YouTube videos just to how to wire the simple circuit because again, I don't do this a lot or hardly ever. Maybe I've done it twice, two other times. Um, but the battery is gonna sit in there, like I said. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is go kind of clean up some of my errors from uh, working on this piece. I just glued the lights on. There's a little bit of putty work. I'm gonna just do the two part epoxy, put that in there and clean it up with the Q-tip and clean up some of this uh, this stuff. And then we're gonna clean up my whole bench again. And then we're gonna come back and see about putting a TV in this little guy's head. If this took me a day to do, I, I don't even know how long that's gonna take me. So <laughs> uh, hopefully my client digs it because it's gonna take some time to do this, but it's really cool. You know, it's gonna be a one of a kind piece for sure. Uh, especially with having the TV in the guy's head. So I'm gonna clean this up, clean up my work here, and we'll come back and work on doing the TV. Okay, next extremely challenging thing for me is to fit this into here. <laughs> so uh, Tony, my client, after I got everything painted, he's like, oh, something too bad we can't do something with a little robot. I'm like, you mean add a TV? He's like, yeah. It's like, well, let me do some research. And uh, initially, I was thinking of Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry stuff, the Raspberry Pi stuff. But uh, again, that's like a lot of programming stuff. And I happened to find this little TV kit 
uh, I Google this came up and initially came like on a chan- Chinese website, but Amazon had them. So 85 bucks, kind of expensive. Um, but we're kind of going all out on this piece. So why not? Right. <laughs> so cool thing about this is that you can, uh, put five hours of your own or four hours or five hours of your own TV clips or whatever clips on this thing that of your choosing comes with a micro SD card. So I'm going to upload clips of the Jetsons. Uh, so it comes with actually comes with a 3d printed console. So the screen I think is just the right size. I was worried it might be a little small actually. Um, so it comes with, a bunch of these parts. It does come with a rechargeable battery. I think the battery lasts about five hours. So um, a couple of challenges with this. First of all, I've got to get it to fit in there and make it look good. Then I've got to be able to get it to where uh, Tony can charge this thing. Um, So I'm thinking about just sticking We'll have to see how this goes together because may, there may be some constraints as far as how I can do this. Now, this thing's pretty fragile. This is 3D printed. I, have to, I haven't looked at the instructions. The instructions are actually online. Uh, so there actually are buttons on the side here for this thing. Um, so, again, this is going to be, be a lot of me just kind of thinking through this. Um, so this looks like this is printed on FDM. I think this back, yes, back part comes off like so. And now this is designed for all this stuff to fit in this guy. I got, oh, this is the remote. So it comes with a little remote. Uh, we got mute, power, channel up and down, volume up and down. It does have a speaker built in. So there's actually already on the, S- the SD card, like some pre-loaded uh, things. There's like some... Um, TV fuzz, there's like the yellow or the colored um, lines, whatever, the rainbow pattern. So there's actually already some stuff on there. So this is what comes in here. I'm not sure what this is. This looks like, I have no idea what this is. That can't be the screen, it's too small. It's got a protective something on there. This is the screen right here. <laughs> and here's a little, so that's the monitor. And I think it is the perfect size. So I'm gonna have to play with this for a little bit. I'm gonna just get off camera. I'm gonna play with this, come up with the game plan. My initial thought is I'm not using this part at all, is to um, disassemble this and use this as a stencil just to kind of mark where this goes. I'm contemplating cutting this head in half <laughs> Um, and then hollowing it all out so I can take it apart because I've got to be able to fit this um, circuit board in there and it looks like it'll fit I hope so I gotta I gotta do some uh, some planning so I'm gonna do that for a while and I'll come back and show you what I've come up with okay so I think I've come up with the initial game plan on how to do this so I just watched the assembly video online and it's actually pretty clever how this thing works. Uh, if you were to use this housing, I'm not going to put it all together because I don't. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it back apart. If I do, so the way this works is, um, if I was going to assemble this as is, is the first thing you actually do is you um, plug the battery into the uh, monitor um, or the screen, and then the screen actually pressure fits into the back of this housing. It, it goes in there and it pressure fits. And then this little speaker, that's what this little guy, this is a little speaker. You plug that speaker into this circuit board right here. Um, again, I don't want to plug this speaker into this little circuit board here. So I can get it all without damaging it. Okay. So the speaker plugs into here. And then these actually get sandwiched together. So this actually becomes one kind of unit. This black area that plugs into this area here and then that becomes one unit and that's like the that's the tv okay so that i can actually put that apart i can put that together and take it apart where you don't want so this gets sandwiched together and that's like that's the monitor and then you have the 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 battery and speaker are loose and then it's designed for the speaker to just kind of 
so but he's the bat and he's adhesive oh my gosh i can't talk with self-adhesive stick to the back of this so um if we want to be able to hear it i'm going to have to put some sort of grates or something in the back of this guy so now this is kind of where um i come into some uh, some challenges with this okay so this is the usb charging port for charging this guy okay <laughs> so uh, I'm not actually care. I really don't care about being able to access the micro SD card. Uh, I'm going to load with clips and this, it just is what it is. But I do need to be able to charge this thing. So my initial thought is I'm going to basically cut this TV in half. I'm going to sand all this smooth right here. Just take all that detail off, cut this out. And I'm going to see if I can use that and put that on the inside, mount the mount, use this still as the mounting uh, mechanism, and then put that on in the inside. So ideally, I just kind of carve out the shape of this, this oval on the front. I'm gonna have to cut this head in half like I had anticipated, um, hollowed out, so I'll probably cut it right back here. I'll cut this in half. And then I'm gonna use this, basically, I'm gonna use this TV as the mounting system. I'm gonna cut it right here. I'm gonna to have to put a hole in the top. There'll be a hole in the top of his head for charging. So, uh, well, I'll talk to my client about doing something there. Uh, maybe I can do a small magnetized antenna or something. He's already got an antenna over here, but maybe I can do something else over here to kind of hide that so you can take it on and off. But that's my game plan. So I'm gonna start working on that and I'll come back when I've got something done. Okay, lots of mess, but we're making progress. So what I did, actually I don't remember what I said last, <laughs> is I um, hacked apart the little guy into two pieces. I hacked apart the TV to everything, took everything out that I don't need. All I wanted of this piece was the part where the circuit board's pressure fitted in. So that meant getting rid of the size, the back, everything. So this is all we got left. <laughs> Not much, but it's luckily, um, I've never done uh, FDM 3D printing, but I'm, I'm assuming this is PLA. It's pretty resilient. It's actually really hard to sand. So um, I've been trying to clean it up, but not that it matters what this looks like, but just so it fits a little bit better. It actually fits pretty good considering um, what I had to do to get it to fit. But so what I did is, and then I hollowed out this guy's head. Now I started to go through to the bottom side to stop, but I made it as big as I could. Um, so this would fit. Now I started to drill, make the hole, but it's a little wonky, which is fine, because it's not the right size, it's a little small. And I basically kind of measured using calipers, I measured the center, found kind of like the center of the of this face, found out where I wanted the screen to go. I got a little snafu there, um, and then I started to make the hole. So the hole's a little wonky right now, because I just kind of, what I did is I, I took this, I flipped it over and traced it on there and it's a little off, which is no big deal. It's a little on the small side, so it's better than having it too big. That would really suck. So now what I'm gonna do is I've thinned this out as much as I can comfortably. Um, it's a little messy right here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna glue this in here. And this is like my mounting system. I marked the center of the screen, and I've got the center there, so once I glue this in, I can go in here with the sanding stick and start really refining this hole a little bit more. Once that's done, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna fill in the gap between this mounting system and the face with some putty, get that smoothed out. And then I'm actually gonna make a little plastic lens. Um, I thought about doing acrylic so I could make it like a bulbous, kind of like what this is, but then I wouldn't be in scale and it's kind of like a, it's already a screen within a screen, so which is fine. Um, so I just bought some uh, Lexan and I'm gonna create a, a, a clear plastic lens that I can put on inside there. And that way it protects the screen, uh, maybe gives it the illusion, it'll give it the illusion that's behind glass. And then ideally what will happen is that when I'm done with all this, this whole thing, if needed, I can always take the uh, circuit board out and the screen out and replace that with another one of these if for whatever reason this stops working. Uh, the next, once I get this mounted and everything and get this hole figured out, I will have to drill a hole from here through here for the charging port. Again, I don't care about being able to get to the SD card. Uh, I'm going to load clips on it and then I'm going to put it in there and hopefully it never comes out again. Uh, and then I got the speaker to deal with. So the speaker is really small. Um, 
and I might be able to mount it. Like I need to put little, you know, like a speaker has little um, slots or holes. So I may just kind of mark it here and drill a bunch of little holes on the side here and mount it there. That way the sound comes out. We can hear it. I thought about doing it on the back side, but that means I got to hollow this part out and I really don't want to hollow, <laughs> hollow this part out. Uh, Cause I want to sand this smooth out. I still need to be able to put these back together. So right now it's going to be tough because there's not a lot of meat to put anything. So um, once I get this all, once I get this figured out and then I can figure out how to put this back together. Um, I'm hoping I can do it with magnets. Um, I'm thinking I can, I think I've got enough room um, on the sides in a corner to mount some magnets, quarter inch magnets, uh, and then they, they can go on and off. So anyway, I just want to stop and kind of explain what I've been doing show you the progress and I'm going to continue going on because again I just need to work and uh, well, every once in a while I'll stop and tell you what I'm doing. Okay here we go so I got the screen dry fitted in and it works beautifully. Oops. Power button. Those are the preloaded clips. Not much on right now obviously. Channels are limited we can watch a fire. So pretty cool effect. So I will put a, a thin piece of clear um, styrene in there to protect the screen. I'm not gonna do that until after I paint. Um, this will all get taken out right now. I do have to figure out a way to mount the speaker because um, obviously it's not very loud. So I don't know, I may try to figure out, and the core's not very long. Initially I was gonna put it on the side, but I'm thinking I might get this out of the way. And if you have this, in the, actually, if you have this in the model TV console, there's buttons on the side. You can control the channels and volume with too. It's pretty cool. So I'm thinking about just drilling some holes to make like a grill right here. And I think I can mount the speaker, just kind of pressure fit it there. And then hopefully um, we'll be able to hear <laughs> kind of what's coming out. But that's the idea. Pretty cool. That took a little over half a day to do but well worth it. I think it's a really cool effect and um, now Judy can watch her favorite cartoon, The Jetsons. Okay, so here's a little robot dude. Um, I took the TV out because I just don't want to mess it up. I got it to the side. I just want to dry fit it and make sure everything works and it does. So the last few things I got to do on this guide, I had to go in and shave this part off a little bit because we lost a little bit of width when I cut them in half. So I lost that little panel detail. There's like a little panel line right here. I'm actually not too worried about it because there's still a detail there anyway. So I went ahead and added a magnet, a quarter inch magnet at the bottom and a 1 16th inch brass rod at the top and that's plenty to hold it together. So you put the brass rod in and put the magnet in and just give it a little squeeze and that holds together very nicely. Um, I still need to drill holes here for a grate for the speaker. And I've got to come up with a solution to um, cover this up, something decorative. Um, he's already got an antenna here. So I've got to think of something. But I did, I made sure to, um, where's my cord? Oh, there it is. Hold on. It's all right. So yep, the way you, this TV works is you charge it through USB. And so I made this hole big enough that you can put in a USB cord and access the charging port on top of the TV. So, um, yeah, so all the innards should fit in there just fine. I tested I can put the, the screen in with the magnet in the place. It doesn't get in the way. Um, so, yeah, so just about a little over half a day to get this modified and installed. Not too bad considering I don't do this kind of stuff. Um, it actually went a lot quicker than I anticipated. It was actually quicker to do this than it was to wire the lights, if you can believe it. Um, go figure because again this came as a kit I didn't do any wiring so all I had to do is figure out how to get it in here and, and, and retrofit it but it's a cool little effect it's, a, it's, an, ex, it's an expensive effect <laughs> uh, but luckily this particular client doesn't mind doing this kind of stuff and it'll be a one of a kind piece so um, yeah so as far as work in progress goes I'm not sure where I am on time on this one but I think we're going to call this one done because I wanted to kind of get to this point where I showed the, the lighting and this um, and get that installed. And then I'll just figure something up out here. Um, I may sculpt something. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But that's it for work in progress three. 
Uh, work in progress four will probably be, um, I'm pretty much ready for primer. Once I get this little doohickey figured out and get these holes drilled for the speaker, I'm ready to start priming. Uh, and then that means there's more prep. So I'll prime, I'll sand, get any imperfections out and prime again. So uh, a lot of, lot of building and processing on this one, but we've done some pretty significant modifications. I do have to fill a little hole right here. I went through when I was grinding um, the backside. You can't see it now because the screen is in the way. So I got to just put a little putty in there to fill that. Not a big deal. But yeah, really cool little effect. Um, you know, I was kind of really intimidated by doing it at first, but it's going to be kind of cool, I think. But uh, so thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Okay, well, I thought that work in progress was done, but it's not. So <laughs> just real quick, I went ahead and uh, talked to my client and I just made some simple rabbit ears uh, to go in to make a little plug for the charging port. So just built up some uh, thick styrene for the plug, shaped it and rounded it off from the top, drilled some holes for a 1 inch brass rod, and I just made these two little doohickeys at the top with just some uh, stock styrene, rounded it in my drill and cut it off and glued it on. So. That's it for this work in progress. Got this all situated uh, and then we'll uh, look at doing some priming tomorrow.